us go. I'll give you this and I'm going to quit. I, I think it affected their surroundings. I think it affected their circumstances. But real praying will affect yourself. Amen. I'm afraid a lot of our praying ain't nothing but our shopping list that we bring to God. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. Mm, that, ain't, that ain't what he's supposed to be. Lord, you come and bend to my will and give me what I want. That's what most of our praying is. Let's just be honest about it. Amen. Oh, but he said when you pray, amen. Our Father, thank God which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Amen. He's holy. Amen. It might look like the Democrats are running things. Amen. Or the Republicans. Thank God, but they ain't neither one of them running things. He's a God in heaven's running this thing. Amen. Preach, you getting in politics? No, and God ain't either. He's a running it. He don't need them. <laughs> Amen. That's right. Thank God. And when they pray, boy, when you really pray, it'll affect you. It'll change you. You know why most folk don't do much real praying? Because God will tell you some things about you when you really pray. Whew. These hidden things down in your heart, God will deal with. Amen. Thank God. He'll change some things in your attitude when you really pray. Amen. And the Bible said when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. Amen. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Boy, I'd like to see that revival, wouldn't y'all? Amen. Thank God. I'd like to just see it like it was. Old Spurgeon said he'd like to see what it'd be like if just one man would 100% shout out to God. We'd never know what the world would be like if we would see that happen. It'd make a difference in this world. You got any praying man? Say, preacher, I don't like your mannerisms. I don't like the way you preach. That's all right. Ask you one question. How's your prayer life? How's your communion with God? How long has it been since we just prayed that long? Whew. You say, preacher, I can't pray that long. What are you talking about? It takes me 30 minutes just to tell him how low down rotten and I've been just today. Amen. That's right. Thank God. Amen. I know. Some of us don't want to admit those things. That's all right. I know what you are. Pinch yourself. Does that hurt? Amen. I know your flesh. Amen. Hey, God, you know, amen, we like to think, oh, we're some super spirit. No, you ain't. Hey, God, your flesh, you come out of the dust of the earth, and the dust you will return. Oh, you are flesh. Lord, help us tonight. How long has it been since we spent a little time? got you a spot where you go to pray along with God and everything else I don't ever forget we was, I'm not going to get into it God help me I don't even want to talk about it really in 2013 we had our family had a rough year I hope I don't ever see another year like that year it was bad I'm telling you it was bad and uh, somebody, one lady said I don't know how in the world you you keep on smiling, keep on preaching, keep on singing, keep on going. I said, sister, it ain't me. Trust me. One preacher said, Brother Dale, how many, how many times have you wanted to quit? I said, you talking about daily or a week? What do you mean? I mean, there have been a few times just in a day I wanted to quit. I just want to say, fooey on it. I've had enough. I can't take no more. I remember one morning, I told my wife, I said, I can't take it what are you going to do? I said, I'm getting in my truck. I'm going down to my prayer closet. I don't know how long I'm going to be there. But I'm going to be there however long it takes. She said, okay. I can get you within a foot of where I stand. And I know y'all probably don't do this. When I was a mully grubbing and I was complaining and voicing my complaint to God, and 
tell him how bad it was and how much I don't understand and all that, when the Lord spoke to my heart and said, what's so bad? And I just stood still and I just stopped. And he said, you still got a wife that loves you. You still got four kids that's healthy. You're still breathing in and breathing out and your heart's still a beating. You got a truck to drive and a car to house. You got food to eat and a roof over your head. You got, you got all these good things. What's so bad? I said, you're right, Lord. Son, I, next thing I know, I got there praising God for the honey bun, the Mountain Dew. I drank on the way to my prayer place. And hey, hey, God got to thanking God for all them things. Next thing I know, hey, I come in. I come in a mully grubbing and a dragging my track. I went out a shouting and a praising God and a waving my hands in the air. Oh, where I about couldn't drive home. Amen. Hey, thank God. Hey, when they had prayed, it made all the difference. It'll make a difference in your circumstances in life. It'll fix your situation. Amen. Yes, sir. I talked to my old boss, my senior. Today on the way home, I was coming through Nashville and I decided I'd call him and talk to him since I left there. And he didn't want to. Now he's a one of co workers to him. I said, Hey, I wondered how your wife's doing. He said, Man, I need you to help me pray. I love that man. He's good to me. I said, Brother Steve, I want you to know something today. He said, what's that? He said, before I pillow my head tonight, I'll be thankful for your wife. She's a dear thing of God. Amen. He said, we're tired of the doctors practicing on her. He said, they've ruined her more than they've helped her said, but I know a great physician. Hey, God. Mm, amen. Hey, God. We, hey, Lord, have mercy. I'm trying to quit. I promise I am. We was, uh, we, me and my wife was praying for twin boys. And, and uh, when we first got married, we was praying for twin boys. That's what we wanted. We wanted twin boys. And uh, we was pregnant with our third child. We'd had two girls. And, and uh, I remember what the, when the Lord told me he's going he's to grant that thing. I remember that. I was praying in the building. It's raining outside, and I was in the building instead of the pine thicket where I usually prayed. And I went down in that building, and I, I, I rode on the back of one of them studs in that, in that uh, storage building, what the Lord told me and the date. I'd like to go get a hold of that stud. I wrote a few things on that thing that the Lord's answered for me. And uh, I remember we went, and uh, my wife was singing, and I was working late. I worked at Pensacola, and I was working late. And she called me, and I called her back, and I said, Hey, what's going on? She said, I'm headed to the hospital. Something bad wrong, something wrong. I'm bleeding bad. She said, something wrong. And uh, I, my sister, my brother and his wife, and, and uh, my other brother, they lost babies. And I, I knew how heartbreaking it was. And it's sad and it's awful. But uh, I knew what the Lord had told me, you know. And, and uh, so anyway, we got to the hospital that night. And, and I'll never forget it. That doctor slapped my wife on the side, leg on the leg with, her, with his back of his hand, said, Honey, you going home, say your little old prayers or whatever you want to do, but this one's over. There ain't no baby. Boy, that broke my heart. And he said that. And uh, I got my old truck. And I headed back to the house. And when I got home, I held her. I got the girls in bed and held her while she cried herself to sleep. When she did, I crawled out of the bed, got my old work clothes back on, just laying on the floor. And I, I slipped them on, went out to that pine thicket. And I said, oh, God. And, hey, man, and he said, son, I don't remember a whole lot went on for about three or four hours in the pine thicket that night. But when I come out of there, I know what the Lord told me. He said, son, no matter what they say, no no matter what they do, and God, this baby ain't over, and they ain't doing that DNC. I didn't even know what a DNC was. And we got to the hospital, and my wife, my wife, we was headed there, and I told my wife, I said, honey, whatever they do, whatever they say, we ain't doing that DNC. She said, now we got to trust the doctors. I said, you don't understand. I said, I went over their head last night, and God said, it's going to be all right. Amen. I sat out there in the waiting room with a field and stream whistling an amazing grace while there's a checking and everything. And they come out there and said, Mr. Owens, come on back. I said, what are you talking about? They said, come on, we're done. I said, all right. They said, we did an ultrasound on her and said, hey, Doug, we'll let you, the doctor, be in a little while. I looked at this, three or four nurses over in the corner looking and pointing at a, at a monitor over there and just giggling, talking. And I thought, Oh, what in the world's going on? My wife said, I don't know. Doctor come in and said, Mr. Miss Owens, 
Not only are you not having a miscarriage or a mole pregnancy like I told you, but you're having twins. For now, we'll call them baby A and baby B. I said, do whatever you want, Doc. But we've been praying for twin boys. We'll just go ahead and call them Joshua and Caleb. Amen. That's right. That's right. Amen. When they had prayed. How long has it been since you really prayed? I'm preaching to somebody tonight. You'll just be honest. You come in here with a heavy load. What did he say to her in Matthew 11? Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. Thank God that's a pretty good trade. He said, bring your load and I'll give you rest. Thank God. That's a pretty good trade, man. Thank God, bring your burden to me and I'll give you rest. Amen. Thank God, that's a good trade right there if you ask me. Thank God. I'm talking to somebody now. You don't know what you're going to do about your situation. The Bible said when they had prayed. You know what you need to do tonight? I hope and pray God will wet some of our yoke. And be really glad. And not hold your load. Sometimes you just need to get off by yourself. No distractions, nobody listening, get off somewhere with God and pray. I'm preaching that tonight. Lay your burdens to the Lord. You need to come tonight because you've lost a loved one. You need to come tonight and say, Lord, I'm going to trust you with my whole heart. I'm pretty sure tonight that ain't a one of us that's going to get to heaven. God's going to say, I'm sorry, but you took your sick with you. I don't think there's a one of us that God's going to say, I'm sorry, but you've studied that Bible too much. And I don't think he's going to look at any one of us and say, hey, you prayed way too much. No. I'm afraid it's going to be on the other one. I'm not afraid of dying, though I tremble when I think about death. I'm always fearful of death. Any nights I've been preaching a long time, I've been still alive. I pastored some. Every time somebody leaves my church, tell them me, I'm still alive. Did I do enough? It's just me. And I said, oh, they better look better leaving than they're coming. I understand what you're saying. They'd look a whole lot better getting on the altar, getting born again, getting right with God, wouldn't you? Amen. Breaks my heart to see them go off and quit church. Take them lost children out yonder somewhere in the world and go shopping on Sunday instead of the house of God. It breaks my heart. Sometimes I wonder, have I done enough? I wonder what it's going to be like when we stand before God and we look at your face. I'm done for tonight. I'm done because I'm going to preach what the Lord wants to preach tonight. When they had prayed, you stand to your feet. Brother Caleb, you and your wife come sing for us. Sling about what he was saying just a moment ago. Yesterday morning I preached on pride. I think.